it gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest speaker today, uh, Rob McNabb from Total Ag. Rob is a well-known face in the every business sector, and since his early days, uh, he's been growing up in the Wanganui Hill Country. He's spent his entire professional life connected to the rural sector. Rob is well connected to the land, and he experiences the same things that you do as farmers. So that gives him empathy. And I like his little byline. This is his mantra. For me, being involved in agriculture has been about helping assist farmers at a grassroots level, seeing positive outcomes for their families we become involved with. So Rob, with that, I uh, welcome you, and we'll hand over to you to take us through the presentation. Thank you for that uh, kind uh, introduction, Mark. Um, so today, the purpose of today is uh, looking at some tips and techniques about how we can handle disruption um, down on the farm, because that's uh, where it all, where the rubber meets the uh, road, is in our backyard on our farms. Could I have the next slide, thanks, Maria. So the key to this is resilience, and resilience means that you have a number of different options uh, as things occur to you from time to time, and you can face adversity. And, uh, so the key word here is having the capacity to overcome adversity. Uh, now that capacity is uh, many things. It's the uh, mental uh, capacity to be able to think through issues and come through on solutions. It's also having the capacity of a network that will help you through and the capacity in your financial uh, capability and access to capital to uh, see you through some issues that are coming. Now, um, disruption is nothing new to farmers. Uh, at present, we're facing uh, another range of disruption with dry conditions in the deep south, far too wet on the east coast in Hawke's Bay, uh, and many different variations throughout the whole of New Zealand. Uh, markets, we live and breathe the markets and the disruption that's occurring there. Uh, and also uh, recently we've re-experienced, because I'm going to say re-experienced uh, a changing regulation environment. The uh, same thing that we faced in the 90s is coming along now, but in a different, uh, it's a wolf in different clothing. clothing. Um, however, what is really different this time around is the speed and unpredictability of these situations developing. And I know Dan Bolton uh, gave us a very good background of what's happening in the supply chain um, and in the logistics of the supply chain. And two years ago, nobody would have predicted this, but uh, it's curing and it's uh, and it's curing on farm very, very quickly. Uh, and there are there are a lot of uh, situations that now are disrupting our normal process of business. So today is, right, what can we do uh, on farm to look at how we handle with this one? So these are some of the keys to handling disruption. And it's an old mantra, but control what you can control. Don't worry about the things that you can't control. So on farm, you can look at the feed, uh, how much feed you have on farm, um, and yes, when it's dry, it's not going to grow that fast, and we're experienced with that, but we have that knowledge. Most importantly, we can, as Tom Fraser uh, really uh, pushed home to us, we can really um, control the demand, how many animals are eating whatever feed we have there. Uh, and I just want to reinforce that these are on-farm decisions, so they're inside the farm gate. Um, it's not about what is happening in Ukraine or the wheat price or the dollar or the price of petrol. Those are all things we can't control. We've just got to focus on what we can control, uh, which, are, which is our bread and butter. This is our farming decisions. Um, and what I really encourage uh, farmers to build as part of their resilient toolkit is a plan. And that's plan based on knowledge. So take time out to create a plan with the best knowledge of your system. Uh, and you do know your system. Trust yourself, you do know your system that uh, when, um, when you're faced with an autumn, uh, that perhaps is not the best autumn that you'd like, 
but you know that you're going to move into a period called winter where the grass is going to slow up and grow and you're going to rely on your supplements. You know those things. So start to create a plan based upon those, uh, based upon that background knowledge. What I also encourage people is whilst they've got the time, um, do what if scenario. So my uh, what if I can't get away those uh, those lambs or I can't get away those cows? Because it's so much easier to do a what if because your mind is free rather than when you face the actual issue and you go, bloody hell, what now what do I do? So um, always encourage people, just what if scenarios and test those with other people as well. Now, this is the very clear thing that you want to, uh, one of the foremost things is be absolutely clear on your purpose um, and you know exactly what your purpose is on farms because uh, regardless of what's happening outside the farm gate what you need to do to make your business work uh, and I give the example there is that I need to be at my winter stocking rate by the 31st of March I need to lower demand so that I can build up feed until winter time um, now, that purpose will not change year in, year out. So you just need to be very, very clear exactly uh, what you need to do to make your business work. The poll question is at the top there is assuming a disrupted supply chain scenario with 500 lambs and 100 extra cattle are still on farm. What is your first choice of solution to solve a feed shortage? And the first one is graze the stock off, sell the stock sore as two apply nitrogen, buy supplementary feed, tighten the feed supply to certain stock classes, I don't know, or other. We might uh, we might sort of just about close it off, but where it's sitting at the moment, so Gray's stock off is at about 9% of the people who are polled. Sell store stock is 45. Apply a bit of nitrogen is about 6%. Might be a bit of price, price influence in that one. Buy supplementary feed is about 12% and tighten feed supply to certain stock classes is 18%. Um, unsure or other is about 9% between them. Yeah, uh, this is excellent. And, and uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody's um, input here. And one of the things that really stands out to me here is there is some very, very tried and true um, farming practices that can occur here, uh, sell stock store that um, is obviously the first one off the first cab off the rank and we have very established processes to be able to uh, offload stock into uh, store market through independent agents, through sale yards, through some of the digital platforms that are there. And it's good to see a lot of farmers are going to say, yep, I, I can do that if I need to. Um, Obviously, uh, Tom Fraser tightened feed supply to certain stock classes. We're going to talk about that further on, and that's a very, very valid way of doing it. Uh, and then the other ones come in here at uh, around about uh, 12 to 9% uh, by supplementary feed, apply nitrogen. Just remember, these are really, really good answers that then you need to uh, scenario out. Uh, for example, if we said uh, buy supplementary feed, that's my that's my go to um, uh, go to uh, course of action. If I'm stuck with 500 lambs and 100 extra 100 extra cattle on board, exactly what supplementary feed do I need? How available it is in the market, and what sort of money will it cost? Uh, and I'll take you through some of the impacts of that further on. So